Right, you're watching TVC Breakfast. It's time to look at the papers this morning. Uh, let's see what the headlines are. And I have with me in the studio Chantal Accountant and Public Affairs Analyst, uh, Shesong Okwadi. Shesong, good morning. Good morning, And uh, Happy New Year. Yeah, good it's to see nice you. to be here. Great, yeah. right. Now, uh, we'll be expecting Chris K. Ningwandu. He'll be joining us uh, shortly at the course of uh, this analysis. But let's begin with the Blueprint newspaper. Blueprint says... Discordant tunes at Trust Dialogue. Uh, restructuring alone can't solve our problems. Jonathan Jega are saying this. Okay, uh, that's from the dialogue that took place recently. Business Day saying quality healthcare elusive despite promise of world class hospitals. Quality healthcare elusive uh, despite promise of uh, world class hospitals. That's the Business Day. Daily Times is next. And governors disown Bello for rejecting COVID-19 vaccines. Governors disown Bello for rejecting uh, COVID-19 vaccines as a governor of uh, Kogi State. All right, Daily Trust is next. Daily Trust says Jegang Odo Adebanjo are saying they restructure Nigeria now. And they are lending voices from different, uh, uh, you know, people who are reacting. We also need an attitudinal change to solve our problems. Former President Goodluck Jonathan is saying this. Okay, restructure Nigeria now. News Direct is next. News Direct uh, on, is focusing on tax collection. Buhari orders MDAs others to grant access to the FIRS. Okay, Buhari orders MDAs others to grant access to FIRS. That's the News Direct. Daily Sun is next. Daily Sun says Nigeria to get COVID-19 vaccines next month. NGF disowns Kogi governor's killer vaccines claim. And uh, Abuad records a breakthrough on coronavirus. And uh, Buhari approves 6.45 billion naira for oxygen plants. Recall that uh, he had approved the oxygen plants in all the states of the federation, including the FCT Abuja. Okay, uh, that says Daily Sun. The Punch newspaper calls for restructuring. Go to National Assembly. Presidency tells Arewa Consultative Forum, Ngodu Adepanjo, as agitation spreads. Restructuring absolutely necessary to deal with problems confronting us. Audrogbe is saying this. Only National Assembly, not Buhari, can restructure Nigeria, says the presidency. Okay, these are all issues uh, from around the country. All right, from there, let's go to The Guardian, The Guardian newspaper. Federal government states allocate less than 5% to agri. Federal government states allocate less than 5% of their revenue to agriculture. And farmers accuse government of lip service to economic diversification. Federal government earmarks 1.73% against 10% Maputo declaration. A failure to boost sector spells doom, as expand boss warns. And that's uh, The Guardian. The Vanguard newspaper is the last one we're looking at right now. Ultimatum to herdsmen, farmers, drivers, forest guards in protest rally for Akeridolu. And uh, show the world that you are father of all. Ondo Monarch style Buhari. YSG, Ondo lawmakers, Ogunloye. Others speak about this and overt support for Mieti Alame destroy Nigeria, as MBLF tells the federal government. All right, and how Akari Dulu reactivated 1969 cattle trade law. 50,000 farmers registered in four years. Agri Commissioner. These are all developments from uh, the Vanguard newspaper. Okay, now, uh, just on the, the issues here border more on. Uh, on, uh, you know, the issue, uh, what is called restructuring. And, you know, the, re the idea of restructuring has been on for so many, several years now, where Nigerians have been talking about restructuring. I'd like us to start from there before we talk about another development on the international scene where we have uh, uh, President Joe Biden you know, signing executive order, lifting visa restriction on countries and settling Nigerians are also benefiting from that as well. We'll go to that, but let's start from this restructuring. 
uh, one of the statements here that restructuring a loan cannot solve our problems. Attitudinal change is one of the key factors that uh, former President Goodluck Jonathan is uh, bringing forth. What do you make of this? Yeah, uh, if you look at the level at which things uh, are, are mm -hmm. as we speak, you discover that it's not about uh, talking about restructuring either the constitution, everything. Mm -hmm. We need an individual reorientation of mind. Uh, I, I was discussing with someone yesterday, and if you look at the level at which corruption has eaten deep into every space, of our, our current uh, uh, generation, it will baffles you. There is nothing anybody wants to do just for service. It's what am I going to gain out of this particular mm. thing? What's in it for me? What, what, what is there for me mm. to gain? So when you have that kind of attitude, then you discover that service is nothing. It, it gets to the list, even to the gate man, mm. that it's being paid to do some, uh, you know, paid salary to do anything, and all he wants to can you do this extra thing to make sure that we we'll get value or improve the value of this organization? And the question is, what is the need for me? Mm -hmm. So you discover that if we want to do an holistic view of restructuring, we must first start with our attitude to things. Mm -hmm. What is your, your view? You discover that our politicians has actually made politics so enticing that that is the only thing you need to do to make money. If you go to school and you work even in the private or public sector, you cannot make any headway until you dive into politics. And within the space of short time, and you discover the politics is about service to humanity, service to people. And it's not about what you are going to get and going to get. So if we must talk about restructuring, whether to take it to the National Assembly like they are clamoring, it's not about worry. We must start with every individual. The civil servants, what is their position about the things that they are doing? What is the attitude that they display even at work? I keep telling everyone that the civil service plays a major role in the success of this country mm. because they are the policy writers. They, 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 they work with the government to put policies in place. They work with the government to implement some of these policies. But what do we get from them? They are not really encouraging us. So if we must talk about restructuring, it talks about an individual from our homes, from wherever we are, to do the right thing. And from there, things start changing. Yeah, but the, the point there is, when we all, as over 206 million people, we're talking about we need to change our attitude and approach to some of these things. And if three or four or five or 10 million people, for instance, decide to change, and the remaining more than 100 and something cannot change, what difference will it really make? Because the direction of that change could also be different. Because if, if, if I am changing my attitude in, in a certain way, uh, maybe it's just 50% of my attitude I'm changing. You could decide to change 70% of your attitude. So if you put the remaining percentage as, as not changed, it's still part of the issue. So some people have said government has that direction and guide as to how things should go. Yeah, and then everybody will follow. Mike, when you say government, mm. who makes the government? It's individual. Mm. The people, the, the, the governors that we have today was once a follower like us. Mm. What is actually the attitude before they go to governance? So if we want to say government has a role to play, who makes the government? Mm. Government is not, it's, it's not cast in the stone as mm. if... It didn't fall from heaven. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it's the people that make the government. And if the people who governs us that were once followers are not doing the right thing, then we cannot have the right direction. So, like you said, if you have 10 million people changing their attitude about it, there are ways you pass it across. Do you know, children cannot even follow the steps of their parents again. Because it's, it's about do what I say and not what I do. But if you have the attitude of do what I do, that even when you are saying something on phone in the house, your child knows that this is what my father, this is what my mother, this is what my parents stands for. Yeah. You discover that parents cannot even talk, you know, boldly in the presence of them. Yeah. So what are you reproducing? So you, you, you discover that we have the fallout even from home. So it's a function of 
Even people that come into governance tomorrow, what is their attitude as followers? While they are working in the private sector or as an entrepreneur or as everything, what can we speak or say about them before you get to governance? So even when you get to governance and you so decay, you discover that your might over time, over time, you will definitely get people that will be loyal to you, mm. that will follow suit what you are out to do. And if you discover that with every effort that you are putting in, changes are not in fact, everybody will see you excuse yourself. Mm. That is the area. But you discover that when people get into governance and they de see the decadence and some of those things, they will rather join the group rather than having themselves excused. Mm. And this is where posterity judges on several people. We must get it right that when you get into a system, the system is not working and you infuse everything, it's a function of you riding boldly, this system is decaying. It's bad, it's terrible, every effort to do this cannot work. At this point, I need to step down. All right, so, so those who are calling for Nigeria to go back to the uh, parliamentary system of government, the way we run the country in, in, in the First Republic, are you saying that it's not necessarily the kind of or the system of, of government we run, but the way it is run? It is not about the system of All government. Right. It is the people that runs the government that is a problem. It is not the system. We, we, we have it worked in the US, we have, even as we copy it out there. So it's about the people, not the system, because the people actually build the system. So if you have the right set of people working at every space of life, every space of, of the department, every space where they have to do the right thing, you discover that things will work. Look at the statement of Biden when he was coming in. He said he's out to give his soul to everything, to make things work. And he has actually picked individuals that he feels, believes in his vision. So until we have the right set of it's not about the system. When you talk about the system, who makes the system? It's the people. If you are here and the, the organization decide to put a system and you decide not to follow suit, it will not work. If you decide to go in a, uh, an opposite direction to what is actually being established as a system, things will not work. But if you key into it and we have the right attitude to it, you discover that things will start changing. Changing. I will always use a leverage of, uh, of Lagos State, even though they are not there. But you discover that over time, we have individuals that have built a structure in place, bring right set of people to make things work the way it should. Even though it, we are not getting it right 100%. But the fact remains that you can build on some of those things and allow it to work. All right. Uh, you mentioned Biden. Let's go there now. Uh, one of his first executive orders that he has signed out of all of them uh, that concern us directly now is the ban on the visa, uh, you know, that was imposed in 2017, I think 2017, that yeah. was, yeah. yeah. And so many of the countries that uh, former President Trump felt that they, they had immigrants who, you know, were threatening to US interests and citizens and safety and security and all of that, including Nigeria, and when it comes to the issues of data, statistics, and so on, that Nigeria was not forthcoming in. You know, wh when it comes to all of that, how, how do you see the new administration so far? It seems like there is new life and new hope coming on board so far. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, w w while I was watching the inauguration, I was discussing with a friend and I said, you can see the oral of uh, a, a kind of peace mm. in the atmosphere. But when you come about the executive order and the one that has to do with the country of lifting of a ban mm. on a visa, uh, it's not to me, nothing serious to celebrate. Why? We're running everywhere. Why can't we sit in a in a locality and make things right? Mm -hmm. America are doing their own. They believe in the country. If you look at the inauguration, they pray for themselves. They look for a way to heal the land. They discover that they had problem that they have to face and attack it once. They are not soliciting for other countries to come and help them. Why do we why do we clamor to say we want to travel? It's because our government has failed us. Everybody wake up this morning and the next thing is like, how can I get visa to get out of this country? Because the environment is not conducive for anyone to work. So it's about our government. It's not what we should celebrate that they've lifted the ban. I think when you have visa, you should just go there, look out to get businesses, ideas and bring into the country. Most of the people that make successes in this country that we're talking of are Nigerian. About three Nigerians 
have been appointed into the government of, uh, of Joe Biden. These are people, if we have the right infrastructure, if we have the right, you know, government policy here, would have developed this. This country is blessed. We have the resources. We have everything that can make us great. But the fact remains that we have wrong set of people at the leadership level. And they are not getting it right. Until we have that, people traveling up and down. Those days, what I believe traveling is meant for, is for you to go down, change your environment. Mm. It's just like you, you've been all time in Lagos, and you just want to have a little time. You can yeah. go to Abudu Ranch, you can go to some of those places, mm. rejuvenate, you know, rethink, re-strategize, come back to Lagos, your Refreshed. base, and, mm. you know, get on. Yeah. Not that you want to go there and... Be a second, you know, second class citizen, <laughs> strictly and do several work that ordinarily, if you have to do it in this country, you will not be able to do it. So fine, lifting the ban maybe for businesses to grow and do some other thing, but not just to go there. The fact still remains that why Trump did that thing, we must go back to eight. Mm. We need a database. Yeah, that, that I, I guess is one of the... We need a database. Yeah, Whether they, they lift it or not, you, you, Nigeria you, must get it right. Yeah. Maybe with this the, uh, NIN, yeah. doing BVN, we must be able to trace things mm. so that when things happen if you commit any atrocity i remember when i was in the u.s i traveled and uh, I, I was like well, well, can they track where you are mm. and you discover that every move you make immediately you enter into the country is the monitor yeah they have the database they have asked you coming in so we must have the database what we were being punished for 2017 let's go back to it it's going to be beneficiary to us yeah. we will be able to take administration All of right. the whole thing okay uh, chris kendengwandu is joining us on skype and he has been uh, listening to what is going on chris good morning it's good to have you join us right now uh that i, I know you for, okay all right. I know you've been, you followed uh, the developments in the United States. Uh, the U.S. has a new president, and that is no longer news right now. Well, he, his, his first few days, he's been very busy with the issues of executive orders and all of that, and he's already impacting the world one way or the other. What, what, what's your assessment so far on the fresh air that some people, <laughs> the way some people call it, uh, what, what, what's your take on the fresh air so far? Yes, Mike, thank you very much. Good morning, Mike. Um, just a good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. Mm. Good to be here. Um, yes, the news done in the United States of America. Um, the inauguration of um, President Joe Biden uh, is historical in several aspects. Uh, first and foremost, apart from the former vice president becoming president now, you also have, for the first time in the history of over, over 250 years of the United States of America, we're having the first female vice president and not just a first female vice president, also a vice president of color, um, whichever one, of which some say she's black, some say she's uh, Asian and the rest of them. But that was the first time that you're having a female vice president uh, in the United States. So it, it, it's historical. And as rightly mentioned, it's uh, reverberating across the globe. Um, just few, um, yesterday, a few, days, um, few hours ago, um, he signed the Blue 17 executive order uh, uh, try to undo some of the things that the former president did. And to me, one of the uh, one of them is that on the issue of COVID, uh, which um, has impacted um, negatively in the lives of uh, America. So about 300,000 people have been killed or died. Uh, so something um, quickly, a quick, uh, well, quickly has to be done about that. He has done that. There is also the issue of digital ban, which I had Chesson talking about. Um, I tend to disagree with Chesson to some extent because uh, visa, uh, procurement of visa does not mean that it's because Nigeria is not doing right or it's not doing right to large people as have. No. There are so many Americans, in as much as, uh, as progressive or uh, as economically viable America is, and uh, even the Western world, there are so many of them in Nigeria. People move around because of business, it's not just for uh, pleasure. So, uh, Americans come to Nigeria, British come to Nigeria, Europeans come to Nigeria, and that is how also Nigerians go to other parts of the world. So, um, just facing a total uh, a blanket ban on certain countries, including Nigeria, is not, was not in the best interest of Nigerians. So, uh, for us, it's a new dawn, and I just hope that the president is able to meet up with the expectation expected of him, because the stake is just too high. Um, in the past four years, Americans have gone through several 
political, social, economic, and other crises that has not impacted positively on them. But we should also forget the fact, irrespective of whatever anybody said about Donald Trump, he left a legacy, especially in the area of economy. Uh, America is much, much better. And he was able to handle the economic situation under a very terrible pandemic situation like that of COVID. Mm. So for me, it's a new dawn. All right. Now, beyond one other discussion, uh, a few Americans are bringing on board. Siki, I'm, I'm staying with you, is that there's the talk about taking some of the uh, executive orders he is signing beyond just executive orders so they can become uh, instruments of law passing through the Congress. Now, uh, what do you make of, of that regard as well, especially when it comes to uh, the approach to climate change and some of those things that impact the world? Yes, Mike, you know, that there's going to be a short term and long term. Mm. Executive orders are supposed to be short term measures mm. to be able to uh, put certain things in place and implement. And don't forget also in Nigeria, um, from, we've also had um, the president giving certain powers, um, which he has also issued some um, executive order. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the short term, the executive order was. But the positive side for Joe Biden is the fact that. The bicameral legislature in the United States favors the Democrats presently. For the first time in over close to um, two decades, the Democrats are going to control both the House of Representatives and um, the Senate, what we call the Capitol. And um, in the Senate is 50 50, which means that if there's a tie, the vice president, who is the president of the Senate, will come and be able to uh, do that. Break the tie. So, uh, yes, yes, break the tie. So, uh, uh, President Biden has his work cut out, and I believe that with time he will start um, um, sending some of those uh, executive orders to the uh, to the capital. For the, don't forget the fact also that the United States is totally divided now. There were over 75 million people that voted for Donald Trump, so his first point of call to be that of reconciliation. Americans are divided across um, party lines now, over close up almost 50 50. So, but I believe that he has what it takes to be able to reconcile. Don't also forget that he, has, he was in the Senate or has been in politics for about 36 years. He was in the Senate for 36 years. So he has the way with that to be able to reconcile and be able to make sure that he pushes um, his, uh, whatever he wants through the capital or the Senate and the House of Representatives and be able to reconcile America as well, who are divided um, in the next four years. It's okay. a soft ball that I believe is, uh, is a strength enough to handle that. Okay. All right. Now, uh, Shesson, on the other hand, um, no country is an island. Yeah. All countries, in fact, is, uh, based on the global village, village phenomenon, countries interweave. Some become from different kind of blocks and all of that. But America remains one of the most influential countries around yeah. the world where they get things done in certain direction, get other things done in certain direction. So when it comes to engagement with African countries, we've seen how America has been very instrumental to a lot of things on the continent. What, what are you looking at in the new dispensation? Although in the last dispensation of Trump, Africans made it, uh, it was like a, a bygone thing where they were not expecting so much from, from uh, uh, President Trump's administration, because he has this America First uh, phenomenon. Yeah. But, but right now, uh, what, what do you think? Yeah, uh, with uh, the uh, president, uh, mm -hmm. Joe Biden, coming in, and the vice president, Black and uh, Asian, we'll see more collaboration in the development of Africa. They, they, believe in them. they believe in us because of the fact that we have the population and uh, where you can develop to make the world a better global village for everyone to be. Uh, there are several policies that they are going to drive. The, you, you can see our president already talking in collaboration of how the U.S. we assist in the area of uh, poverty eradication and uh, the security aspect, which we believe uh, you know, their collaboration with us will definitely ease certain things because they, they, they have it all. So we see a better uh, development, a better growth, uh, even with uh, the Joe Biden coming in and uh, giving, you know, a good leverage for the Africans so that we can grow mm -hmm. and make things happen. The only call is that as they will be having this collaboration with us, our leaders should do what is needful so that everyone down the drain can actually benefit from some of the 
policies mm. that will be having interchangeably to develop us. Mm. Oh, all right, CK, and, uh, you're going to have the last uh, take right now. Uh, when countries engage, it is advised that they engage based on where they have comparative advantage. And sometimes when we look at the points of engagement, the itemized point of engagement between African countries and the United States is often more of what America is going to give to Africa, what we're going to get from Africa, how we're going to benefit and all of that. How can we begin to change this narrative where countries can engage, I give you, you give me, we collaborate, we become friends, everybody prospers and all of that? Yes, um, a, a, a quick one, Mike. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we, are, we are inside, we start gaining um, South Africa. Um, don't forget that one of the executive orders that was signed by the president was that of rejoining uh, the WHO, World Health Organization. Mm. And uh, in a pandemic uh, year, a period like this, Africa, with the America um, uh, rejoining WHO, uh, we are going to see a lot of impact um, in that direction, especially with the fight against um, coronavirus. So it will benefit Africans. Then, um, Africa has always been having a trade deficit with the United States of America. Uh, um, I hope that we'll be able to uh, engage more in that and be able to benefit from that. Then, also, it is to America's um, interest that Africa is safe. So, in the area of security, America is going to engage more with us. Don't forget what is happening in Africa, in the Sahel, in, in Nigeria, Boko Haram, and the rest of them. ISIS have been defeated uh, in the Arab world, and they are now shifting to Africa. So it is in the best of um, uh, in the best interest of America that Africa is safe, and I see a lot. They are doing a lot in that area mm. uh, to make sure that we are safe. And some no, new cells are not built in Africa, which will be to the detriment of the economic and political survival of the United States of America. So I see okay. a lot of engagement. All and right. Democrats have always been very positive when it comes to engaging in this Africa. Okay, we have to leave you here now. Chris Kane Dingwandu, thank you so much for your time on the program. And uh, Shesok Wade, thank you very much for coming as well. Thank really you. I really appreciate both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice And you too. Have a great day.